Hey, it's Dan here one more time, and I'm happy to say that we are now, or should I say my podcast is now sponsored by Escarpment Laboratories, yeast production for the fermentation of the exceptional craft beer. Whether your kit is on the stovetop or in a commercial brew house, wholesale yeast and quality control for the profitable bro- pro brewer, community engagement and education for the discerning home brewery. If you are a craft brewer and you love using quality yeast, then you really do need to check out Escarbon Laboratories. Whoop. Hey everybody, Dan here one more time with my adventures in home brewing, and it's brew day once more. Excuse me if I like, scrub my eyes. Uh, thanks again to Escarbon Labs for uh, helping us out again this week uh, by giving us the, uh, the yeast that we're going to use, which is Lactic Magic, which is, where is it? Here it is this lovely pouch right here. So we're going to be doing this for our Berliner Weiss and see what it's like compared to a Wild Lullaman's uh, Wild Brew Philly Sour Pitch. So we're going to see how that works out. Uh, so today's recipe, if you want to check it out, is going to be here and I'll make sure I attach the full recipe in the description. And again, if you want to check out some great people, check out these guys here at Escarpment Laboratories. A lot of good stuff there, and also stay tuned uh, for what's more that's coming along. I'll uh, wait for actual uh, for beer making. Uh, check me out on my podcast. Uh, you can find me on Spotify, uh, Podbean, Apple Podcast, uh, what else? Google Podcast, or whatever it is that you use for your podcasting and listening. Find me on Twitter. Find me on Instagram, and also find me on Facebook. Uh, I'll put all the all the handles for them in the description. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, and hit the notification for when we actually do have some new uh, videos coming online. And yeah, so today we're going to be doing, like I said, the Berliner Weiss, which I've done before. This time around, a little something a little different, not only from the yeast. Uh, we're going to use uh, mosaic hops, and also we're going to use blackberries when it's time to transfer it over onto the fruit. With that said, uh, we're going to need about 4.4 pound, yeah, 4.4 pounds worth of uh, wheat malt and also about 4.4 pounds worth of uh, Pilsner malt. So I've got everything heating up, getting ready to roll. So uh, let's get out, get down to uh, measuring out some grain. Okay. So I've done this recipe before and it's uh, a really good one. It turned out really well. The only thing that I said I would do differently with it is that I would uh, add more fruit to it. So this time around, because I only added about two bags worth of frozen raspberries. There we go. That's that. Oh yeah. These are some of the best containers you can find these uh, Vittle Vaults, you can get them at your local pet store. Uh, I got mine through PetSmart, they are fantastic. Um, one thing I do in all my bins, was not only are they cool and dry, but I also put rice hulls in them so I know that I have rice hulls. So now we're going to tear that, and now we're going to put in four pounds worth of Pilsner malt. Milling. Kite it up here a little bit. Spread like a virus through other art forms. Composter. We yearn to be free. Completely ourselves without judges and scorecards. Now how can charity very nature create scarcity? How can artists make the music dry up? Together we are singing the songs of creation. Sorry. 
so a lot of my stuff I have, um, I got some of the stuff was actually really just given to me. Um, like this mill was given to me, uh, carboys, um, a few other little things here and there uh, have been given to me. Uh, I've also been very grateful for anyone who's ever helped me out along the way and was supplying me with gear or let me borrow gear. Like just my boss, my boss Justin and my buddy Bert. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without those guys. So now one thing I do when I do this. <laughs> Hang on. Ah. Can you see me over there? One thing I do uh, before I even start milling the whole lot, I was I put a good handful in, and then let it sink up. Then I start it up. Drill. And I'm like, oop. Stay there. Okay. And now we have our grain all milled up the way we want it. And now, a lot of you know uh, with me is I like using. Uh, I like using a mesh bag for my malt pipe because I use a robo brew and it has an internal pump. And in order for me to prevent uh, the pump actually from getting all messed up from particulates. And... All right, so uh, we're gonna start our mashing. Uh, I use a fork, cup, measuring cup, and I add a little at a time just to make sure. I don't get any dry spots, and I avoid a stuck sparge. So we've got about 12 liters of water in here, up to about 170 degrees. Uh, we got to drop that down, I believe, to 150. All right, so strike there. Pause it. Yep. So now we're going to get that to come down to 150. So here in Ottawa right now, we're going through a bit of a uh, bit of a heat wave again. So it looks like I've been swimming. It's because I'm swimming in my own sweat right now. It's so warm out here.
This is up a little high. We're gonna push it down. Right off. So there's a an overflow pipe in the center of the Bruzilla plate or the bottom that is adjustable. What I normally do is is that I have it set to the highest point when I'm doing the mashing because you don't know exactly how much room it's gonna take up until you actually put everything in you mashed in with the strike water and everything else. Uh, overflow valve. You just slap that on top the best we can. Like that. So this is only like not not even nine pounds worth of, gr of graining here. So it's not a huge grain bill, but it's enough to cause problems. So now we're going to start doing our Vorloff. And we are going to mash for an hour. So with that said, guys, mashing has started. Uh, I'll take the camera and show you the Vorloff in a sec. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. We are now going to go check out the uh, actual mashing in process, or the bore I should say. So here we go. That's what I can see. So it's a little steamy. Sorry about that. So as you can see, we're vor we're, all the Vorloff is basically you are rinsing over the grains to make sure you get everything saturated as possible, and also you're trying to clear the wart as possible too, from what I understand. And yeah, so this is what it's doing right now. So basically I'm recirculating all the wart on top of the grains to actually try and get as much of the sugar and starches out of it as possible and also to make it as tasty as possible. So right now, as you can see, that's what's going on. And yeah, we're gonna go from there. All right, so stay tuned guys, there'll be more coming along the way. 